I'm talking about um, listening effort in school-aged children. So uh, for a long time we've been interested, at least our lab has been interested in um, this concept of listening effort, which is um, the cognitive resources necessary for speech understanding. So how hard does somebody have to work to understand the words that they've heard? Um, and we've looked at a lot of things in adults. Um, do hearing aids help listening effort? Maybe directional microphones, do they help effort? And um, in adults, it turns out that hearing aids improve um, listening effort, so it makes it easier for them to understand the words that they've heard. Um, and in some situations, directional microphones also help. Um, and these situations are the um, more complex reverberant environments. So um, then we started thinking about children who are, um, especially in the classroom, in really acoustically disadvantaged situations. So they spend a lot of time listening to noise, and they're also learning. And so for us, it became really important to start looking at um, technologies, microphone technologies that might reduce listening effort, free up some of those cognitive resources, and help students learn. So the study is talk looking at um, the potential for two kinds of microphone technologies, directional microphones and also um, FM systems to improve listening effort, um, potentially. But we're also interested, we know that kids are in really complex listening situations, so we're interested for what happens when it's, for example, the teacher standing in front of the child, um, or what happens if the teacher has the FM microphone and then the, some, another child behind starts to talk. So if the child wants to focus on what's coming on from behind, what effect does that have on their uh, speech recognition and also listening effort? And so for us, this suggests that the the microphone technologies have the potential to improve listening effort and reduce that cognitive load in the classroom, but we have to be careful about um, using these things full-time because if we're in a full-time directional mode or there's always an FM system, um, we can really be um, hurting performance and uh, speech recognition. And so, um, there, of course, there are technologies, um, auto these automatic features, the dir automatic directional switching and the adaptive FM adaptive FM, I think, have the real potential to um, sort of mitigate some of those negative consequences. Yeah, I really think um, a lot of the work that, in my head, when we're doing this work, I'm thinking about audiologists. So how do we prescribe, you know, how do you fit the child in your classroom? Do you fit them with a full-time directional? Do you give them an automatic switching? Um, do you give them an FM all the time or um, have adaptive FM setting or that kind of thing? Um, I think it's also interesting for teachers um, to think about these kinds of things, but they don't have a lot of control unless it is making sure that they are, you know, if they've got an FM system on, making sure they're in front of the, the child.